Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn. I'm going to be showing today how to use the uh, Shining 3D DSEX Pro scanner to scan this triple tray. So this is actually for a guided surgery. The doctor, to generate their STLs, just took a simple triple tray impression. And so we're going to scan that with the scanner, generate the STLs, and then we'll pull that into Blue Sky Plan to generate the, uh, uh, the surgical guide. So what we're going to do to start here is go to the dental scan software and I apologize for you know video recording my screen usually I use actually screen recording software but when this window maximizes like you just see here uh, for whatever reason it actually doesn't let me screen record that so I'm just going to do both in combination using the camera here so we're going to click first on create a new order and we'll just punch in some patient initials and this is going to be an upper missing number 12 if you're using universal numbering. And so I'm going to click on that tooth. Now, people get confused on this step. You don't have to perfectly indicate this stuff. I'll usually just go with the anatomic crown. You just have to indicate something so that it knows it's scanning that arch. But furthermore, you're going to have to do something in the opposing arch. Once again, you could say anatomic crown. I usually will just say antagonist and then we'll click finish. That way the software knows that it's scanning an upper and a lower. If you don't do that, you would only get you know the one arch. So you've got three scan types here. There's a sectioned model that would be allowing you to scan the total model and then individual dies. You can do an unsectioned model or you can do an impression. So that's what we're doing here. And then as far as your occlusion type, it's going to be triple tray. And with that done, we'll save it, and now we're going to click Scan. Okay, so you can see it's asking for the maxillary arch first. So I've got the maxillary arch facing up towards the camera. And with that done, I'm going to click on the Play button. So one of the things I like about this scanner is really, really fast. Uh, you can see it's just really flying through the images, it rotates very quickly, and it renders really quickly as well. So it's going to take about 35 uh, images since this is our arch of focus. It'll take a few more on this arch than it will on the opposing. Uh, but regardless, it's, it's very quick, so it just takes a few seconds. And now that's processing. And so you can see it picks up a little bit of the table, but this plane right here indicates what it's going to cut off as you know being noise. Uh, so that's great. I'm looking at it. I don't see any missing data at all. If I did, I could orient to look into that area and hit Add Scan, but doesn't appear to be a need to. So I'll hit Complete. Now it wants me to do the lower impressions. So you simply take this, flip it over with the magnetic clip, and now you can hit the Play button again. And so, as you see, this one's taking 28 images instead of 35. And so usually it's going to spin it around from the side and take a bunch of images. Then it comes up on an angle, takes another round of images, and then it will look directly into the occlusion and pick up all the occlusal surfaces and sizal edges and so forth. All right, so images are done. It's processing. And now just to show this, um, you know, sometimes you'll miss areas on anterior teeth. Uh, usually that's because sometimes you can have so much angulation to the teeth that there's just no way for the camera to look in there. Now that almost never happens on posteriors. It's usually on incisors. Um, it's actually missing a little bit of data here, but I actually know the reason for that is more so because do you see the translucency through there? That's where that patient's bite is so heavy. So it, it really wouldn't help if I took additional scans. I'm not going to pick that up. So the software is just going to fill in that hole, and that would be fine. But just to show it, you know, let's pretend. I'll uh, orient to look into this area, and I'm going to hit Add Scan. And the software spins around. It takes another image, and that green data is what was added there. So this looks good. I'll complete this. And now we can do any data editing. So uh, I like to trim my models up. So let's go to the Edit tab. And I'm just going to circle these areas that I do not need. And we'll delete that. 
and then I'll look from the back and we'll delete that okay so there's my mandibular model I'll okay it now let's go to the maxillary model okay so maxillary model same thing I'm going to cut away some of this excess data So usually right there on the boundary of your impression, you'll want to cut that away. And we'll get that little bit, as well as this. And then just this last little wrinkle here. There we go. And then if you do have some little floating pieces, you can grab those as well. And now we're good. So as a last step, I want to look at the bite. So one of the beauties of scanning a triple tray is like your bite's dead on. Unless you didn't have them biting during the scan, then it's always going to be correct. So we'll complete this. And now I'd click uh, go to pre-design. Now, if I was going to go into ExoCAD or something like that, I might mess around in this portion, but I really don't need to. Instead, I'm going to click Go to Send, and now just export these. And we're going to just do these as STLs, and here you have it. These are my upper and lower STL models. All right, so with that done, let's now, uh, now that I can screen record, I'll pause this for a moment, and then we'll show you the rest of this in Blue Sky. Okay, so now we have taken our scan, we've got the folder open with those uh, two STL models in them, and I've also gone ahead and opened uh, this patient's comb beam data in Blue Sky Plan. So here you can see we've not done anything yet, we've just simply opened the data. Alright, so the first step we're going to do is just grabbing that uh, STL. I'm going to do the upper first, so I'm just going to drag and drop in here. Now it's going to ask me, is this a maxilla or a mandible? So I'm going to tell it a maxilla and this generally is going to auto stitch. However, I'm skeptical it will in this case because this is only a quadrant impression. The auto stitch function works amazing when you have a full arch, uh, but sometimes if you've only done a partial arch, you might not get a great stitch and you might have to do it manually, which is not the end of the world. But, you know, having said that, actually this kind of surprises me. We appear to have gotten a great stitch here. So that's good news. Um, with that done, I'm going to bring in the opposing. Now, one little trick here. Do you notice that the comb beam was taken with the bite open? So if I bring this in and stitch the mandible to this, well, now I have no way to judge occlusion when I'm doing this. So let me show you how I'd bring that one in instead. Now I'm going to grab the lower jaw, okay? And just like before, it's going to ask me to do this, and it's wanting to stitch it to the comb beam data. That's not what I want to do. I actually want to bring it back into its original orientation to the maxilla. So when this pops up, this is one of those unique circumstances. Just disregard it, click the X, make that go away. And rather, come up here to Panels, Model Manipulation, which is the one open right here, and you can actually stitch this two model. So you're going to stitch one model to another. Now I'm going to hide this comb beam data just so you can see this. So back in model manipulation, the blue lower jaw model, I've got mandible clicked, I'm going to say stitch this to a model. Now this is going to ask what destination model and you want to choose the upper jaw, right? Because when you had these files uh, outside of blue sky plan, right, they were oriented upper and lower in occlusion. So all it's going to do is apply the same global orientation change to the mandible that was done to the maxilla, and now that brings them back in. So you don't need to check uh, a line using points. You want to avoid that. Just click OK. And now we have the original occlusion as it left Blue Sky Plan, or as it left the scanner, I'm sorry. OK, with that done, we're going to go to uh, surgical guide mode. Now I am working in advanced mode. Uh, some of you, if you're newer to this, might want to work in 
uh, normal mode, which would have kind of a wizard that leads you through the steps. Personally, I like the, uh, the flexibility of working in uh, advanced mode because I can jump around and just kind of do whatever I want. Okay, so for starters, I'm going to be in the surfaces panel here. Any of these panels I mention, if you don't see them, you just come up here to panels. There you see surfaces. And this is where you can turn objects on and off. Okay, so for starters, I'm just going to take a random tooth, so plus tooth. And you can choose whatever library you want. Uh, I'll use this Bastion Deloge library. And let's choose tooth number 12. And I'm just going to drop it into place here. Okay, that's obviously too big for this. So I'm going to scale it down buckle lingually. And we're going to make it a little skinnier mesial distally too. Now, sometimes people can get a little disoriented because your, your widget can be hidden under this model. One little trick you can do is just select that model and turn the transparency down just a hair. I can still very much see that, but now my widget appears much more easily. Okay, And I'm going to try to look at this from various angles and try to somewhat match the adjacent teeth. Okay, That looks pretty good. and maybe bring it down so it's not quite so tall. So for my purposes, this is pretty darn good. If I look here, that's got decent occlusion. I don't really care if it's an absolutely perfect occlusion for a single tooth implant. Now, if this was for seven, eight, nine, you know, maybe I would, you know, be a little more particular on that. But here, I'm not too worried about it. And then I could actually scoot it up until I just see that tooth starting to impinge. So that way I know it's it's roughly in occlusion. Okay, so that is my wax up, let's say. Looks like it could use just a bit of a twist there. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. And I've, I've still got good occlusion. Okay, so with that done, now we can place an implant. So let's look at our site here briefly. I'm going to lock this tooth. So if I click on this site, it looks like we've probably got about, well, let's, let's measure it. We've got an eight and a half millimeter ridge. So my go-to implant for a premolar site is a 4.3. Really a 4.3 implant is great in a molar, in a premolar, in an anterior. That's a 4.3 by 10 is my standard go-to implant. So here it looks like we've got plenty of length. I'm going to initially just put in a Biomax 4.3 by, let's say, 11 and a half first, okay? And one other thing I'll generally do is I'll put on a custom abutment. I'm going to make this about 20 millimeters long. And the only purpose of that is for me to help visualize where a screw access hole would end up. So I'm dropping it into this view. And I am in the tangential window here. That's this window here because that is the best window to be able to you know, rotate this around, evaluate it from different angles. So I'm getting it right in between the adjacent roots, equidistant. That looks good. And now I'm going to spin it and look at it from mesial to distal. And looks like now I need to pull it over just a hair. OK. So we've got great buckle bone over here. Now, I could get this apex where it's a little bit more tucked in the bone. And if I do that, you know, that's probably going to need a custom abutment, I would guess. I think we can split the difference. I'm mainly concerned about buckle bone more crestally. If it's at the apex, I'm not that worried about it. But it looks like we've got, at the crest of bone, we've got two millimeters of bone on all sides of this implant, which is pretty ideal. Okay, so... Let's look at our screw access hole. That looks like that should work out really well. OK, so with that done, I'm going to hide the tooth by hitting this button. And now we just need to turn on the guide tube. So let's go to implant list panel. And this third box over here is the guide tube. Now, what kind of kit do you want to use? This is a blue sky, so you can choose any of the blue sky kits. I'm going to use the fully guided surgical kit. All right, 
And one thing that I always get questions about is, hey, my, my ring is impinging into these adjacent teeth. Well, as you see here, as long as that tooth is not impinging into this inner circle, it's going to be fine. It, you'll have a thin area here, but that's, that's okay. That's not a problem. Okay, so that looks good. And I'm going to lock this implant. Now we're ready to make the guide. Let's go to guide panel. And this is a maxillary guide. We're building it on the green model. I always lock the implants. I use the automatic brush. And we just need to draw the curve. Okay, so draw the curve just means you're you're designating the outline or the boundary that that guide is going to fall on. So I'm holding shift as I draw this. And I just continue my line around until I get back where I started. And then you want to take that last green dot and drag it into your first red one. Okay. If you would like, you can also put some windows in this. So one of the things that can go south with a uh, guided surgery is if you don't have your guide fully seated. So you want to probably place some windows. So I can place these wherever I want. I usually like to do them just on the buckle cusps because that's where it's easiest for me to see. And, you know, we could maybe, I think probably just by virtue of how this guide tube is going to go, I'll end up with a window here and here as well. So I think this is adequate. Let's hit Create Surgical. And there's our guide. And so a few other things you can do if you want to put some text on this. You know, if you've got a lot of cases going on and you have a few of these sitting around, you might not remember who's who. So you can emboss or engrave text on this. So I've just put my own initials for sake of demo. And now this guide has that text in it. So what we're going to do here uh, is go ahead and export this guide. Now remember, that guide tube was impinging in this, but if I turn off my implants now, do you see how now it's, it's, it knows it can't impinge into that model? And so it's trimmed away all that excess, and there's no impingement internally into this. Okay. So we're going to export this. Let's go to File, Export Data. And anything you have checked on here is going to be exported. So all I want is this guide with Windows. I'm going to click Export. And it will deduct one of my exports when I do this. Uh, it's just one per case. And I'm just going to throw a name on it. And then just to see this process all the way through, let's go ahead and launch my Sprint Ray software. Uh, that's the printer I primarily work from. So here we are in Sprint Ray. I'm going to add the guide that I just generated. It's in my downloads. There it is. And we just want to pull this over into the middle of the build plate. You want your intaglio oriented up, right? And then you can just add supports. Uh, you can do that by clicking here, or I can just simply hit this button that says fix. There's my supports. And now I can simply go and connect to my printer and push print. That's literally it. So this is a very simple process that anyone can learn. Uh, if you're interested, I've got a course coming up on October 14th and 15th. This is 2022. Uh, so I'd love to have you. This is all stuff that we cover, printing, scanning, uh, basic guides and blue sky plan up to full arch guides. Uh, soft tissue guides and really basic bone guides and then if you want to go beyond that and the stackable and the really complex stuff I've got an advanced full arch course uh, but hopefully you found that helpful uh, you know this is something that really anyone can do with very minimal amount of practice uh, it makes life so much easier to have this surgical guide when you're doing implant surgery